Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today as always we are covering an interesting Astro topic and that is the Celestron 130 SLT Reflecting Telescope. For those of you that might not be familiar, I do run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years I've had the privilege of only knowing over 100 scopes, some more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to this review. Alrighty guys, so the 130 SLT, where does it fit in the kind of lineup of Celestron telescopes? Well, it's kind of hard to hide. Um, as the title of the video implies, and probably as the price point you know, implies, it is really kind of Celestron's, you know, kind of really budget telescope that is fully go-to. And by go-to, basically it's able to find objects for you automatically in the night sky with still, you know, a decent amount of aperture. So it's five uh, inches of aperture, which uh, is actually enough to show you, you know, a pretty good view of a lot of different objects in the night sky. And we'll kind of get uh, later on to uh, which objects it's kind of really good for and which ones, you know, it's going to be lacking uh, in a little bit as well. For those of you that might have watched my channel, and if you have not, I'm actually linking the video up uh, in the thing above. Um, I usually do recommend the Nexstar 6S as your first, you know, real kind of telescope. Obviously, you know, the reason that I'm making this video is because not everybody has the budget for the Nexstar 6S. See, right now the uh, retail price on it or the MSRP is $1,100 on the 6S, although I did see on Amazon currently it is on sale for $899, you know, of the making of this video. Um, the 130 SLT uh, normally retails for uh, about $640, bucks, but uh, again on Amazon it looks like it's on sale for a little bit under the $500 again right now at the making of the video so the price difference is you know pretty big i mean it's almost twice the price difference for the 6sc and that is actually exactly why i want to make this video to see if the 130 slt is actually you know what worth a while contender so now so having said all that let's get down to the astro cave we'll look at we'll look at both the si scopes side by side and i'll kind of tell you what the main differences are and uh, which scope is better for what kind of thing Alrighty guys, welcome to the Astro Cave. So here they are, both of the telescopes. So now since this review is about the 130, let's take a look at this guy first. And there she is, the 130 SLT. So if you're not familiar with telescope designs, the 130 SLT is called a reflectant telescope. Uh, it's got a front aperture of 5 inches or 130 millimeters. Uh, the focal length on this guy is 650 millimeters which uh, relatively speaking is pretty fast. Uh, it does come with a two inch focuser, uh, which, you know, is actually, you know, it's not high end, uh, but it's, you know, overall pretty smooth and uh, it does work, you know, pretty well with larger eyepieces. I mean, I don't know if I'd be putting like a three pound eyepiece in there, but overall it works pretty well. And let's take a look at the innards of the telescope. So as you can see, there's the mirror. That's why it's called a reflecting telescope because it reflects the light off of that primary mirror back off of the little mirror and it shoots it up to the eyepiece uh, there. I won't get too much into the details of the different telescope designs. If you'd like, check out the video that I'm linking up, up above right now. That'll kind of tell you more about the differences. And in general, it's actually a good video to watch about, you know, telescope basics. That's where I cover the successy. And now the collimation of the telescope, just like on most Opsonian or reflecting telescopes, is handled with these uh, push-pull basically uh, three screws. And they're like, wait a second, there's six screws there. Well, it's because three of these lock the mirror down and three of these actually adjust the collimation. Essentially, they kind of, you know, tilt the mirror. If you're not familiar with what collimation is, I am linking in a, uh, a video right now that I've done on how to collimate a reflecting telescope. Uh, anyhow, and as I said in the intro, the mount on this thing is fully go-to. Uh, this thing does actually use the Nexstar uh, Plus uh, controller. So it's got the uh, uh, Celestron Skyline, which is really cool. Uh, basically allows you to choose any three bright stars in the night sky. And the telescope is basically aligned just with that. So pretty cool. Overall guys, so what do I think about, you know, kind of like the use case scenarios for the, you know, 130 SLT? Um, well, like I said, it's a pretty fast reflecting telescope. So uh, kind of, you know, like there's there's an upside to that and then there's kind of a downside to that. The upside is that if you're into observing, you know, kind of like large, uh, you know, nebula and that type of deal, star clusters and that type of deal, it's easier to get lower powers and wider field of views with that scope. Uh, conversely, if you're into higher power observing, 
uh, having that you know kind of shorter focal length is actually you know kind of a detriment. To kind of give you guys an example, the supplied eyepiece that comes, uh, the higher power one that comes with the, uh, with the 130, is a nine millimeter plossel. Uh, with the 9 mm plossel, I'm posting the actual magnification in right now, but you're going to get only about 70 times magnification. Now, if you're new to telescopes, you might think, well, that sounds like, you know, kind of like a lot. Well, in a sense, uh, that's actually kind of like a lower to, you know, mid type of magnification. For deep sky objects, for a lot of them, it'll actually work pretty well. But if you're looking at the planets, they're going to be appear very, very small at, you know, 70x. Now, to get to a more useful planetary magnification, which would be, you know, like over 120x, you'd have to basically double that magnification. So you'd either have to have about a 4.5 millimeter eyepiece or probably you know just buy a barlow which doubles the magnification of any eyepiece and realistically at that 130 or 40x or so you are kind of topping out because with the five inch reflecting telescope really you kind of start to lose you know like uh, the image brightness if you go much higher in the magnification of um on the planet so that's kind of one of the things that's a downside with this particular telescope already kind of switching to the view of both the scopes so um you might be wondering okay so why is this thing you know relative roughly half the price of that telescope uh, a couple of the main differences guys i'll just cover them real, really briefly overall like i said the focus on this uh it's not the greatest uh and you know it does work I'd say that the focus on SCTs is a much smoother unit, just, you know, kind of just in general works a lot uh, better. Um, as you can see, tripod wise, this does use a, a lighter weight tripod. Next to our series scopes use a better tripod, so it's going to be a little bit more stable. Like, let's do a quick stability test. Okay, so I'm kind of shaking around the next star. You kind of see it move a little bit, not too bad, right? 130 SLT. So I'm, you know, just a little with my finger shaking. You see how much shake there is? Uh, now I'm posting in a video right now of uh, go to slew with the, you know, when I was using this actually outside at night. Motors are actually really quiet on this. So I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, the go to accuracy was actually, you know, just as good as the next star, at least on my particular sample. So I was really impressed with that. I was really happy to see that. Um, now the reason that I'm also like posting in this clip is because I kind of did a stability test basically. Uh, when you're looking through the eyepiece, right, like if you kind of bump, bump the scope, right, how long does it take to settle down? Uh, this particular one at low power settled down in about five seconds, well, no, not five seconds, in about three seconds, which is actually typically, you know, I'd consider that to be a pretty, you know, like reasonable uh, settle time. Uh, so overall, not bad. That was at a low power though. So if you're doing higher power plants, you're observing. And the reason that you care about that is, you know, like when you're like looking at the plants, right, and you're, you know, you're like adjusting the focus, right, you're shaking the telescope. So it's going to take, you know, a while to kind of settle down. So that's why you really care about that. If you're not touching the telescope, really, unless it's windy, I mean, it's not really going to shake anyway, right? So, you know, overall, not bad several times. I would recommend uh, having uh, vibration suspension pads. Uh, I'll post a link in to what they look uh, like, and I'll have a link in the description to them. But basically, they go under the tripod, if, especially if you're using it on concrete, like, you know, it's set up right now. That'll be very beneficial to dampen in the vibrations for you. All right, so kind of, you know, the other difference with the next air. So the next air, it's an F10 system. Uh, the focal length on this guy is 100, 1500 millimeters. So much longer. So get into higher powers with this on the plants would be a lot easier. You could overall use higher powers just because of that inch of extra uh, magnification too, as far as image brightness goes. Um, overall, I'd say that especially if you're like considering imaging the planets, this is a much, much more better scope for imaging the planets, but really even observing the planets with. Uh, for deep sky, um, you know, the difference, because obviously this is a six inch versus a five inch, you know, that's not a huge difference, but you will see, you know, like visual, you will be able to see a difference between these. So, you know, galaxies, star clusters, nebulas will show up a little bit brighter. Now, is it going to be like an earth shattering amount of difference? Absolutely not. So I wouldn't lose too much sleep over that uh, this does you know with that 1500 uh, millimeter focal length it's still you're able to get you know pretty wide you know field of view i'm posting in you know the maximum field of view of this thing then right now um, and i'll actually post in like a little screenshot of what like you know like a common deep sky object probably like m42 what that'll look like at the maximum field of view that this is able to achieve 
so it'll easily fit you know most objects in the field of view still all right you guys welcome back hopefully you guys enjoyed that kind of little bit of an overview of the uh, 130 slt versus the next r6 sc and hopefully that gives you a better idea of you know what you know what the kind of main differences are between the scopes overall again i do recommend the 6 sc if you could afford it if it's just totally out of your budget and 500 bucks you know right now at the making of this video we're right before Christmas and I, I know that, you know, something that's over a thousand bucks is really, you know, kind of like a really big Christmas present for a lot of people. It certainly is, you know, would be for me to give to one of my kids. So um, if 500 bucks is kind of like, you know, just like your bare, you know, like kind of like top of your budget, you know, the 130 SLT, it is a capable telescope. You know, quite frankly, I started with a much more uh, worse telescope when I got into the hobby. Uh, so I think, you know, if your child or you're interested in the hobby and you, you know, you really want to give it a shot, I think overall it is a good scope to start with. Uh, it'll be good for deep sky objects. It'll be pretty good for the planets. It'll certainly show you very good views of the moon and that type of deal. So anyhow, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys are not subscribed, you're interested in the hobby, please do consider subscribing. It helps me out and hopefully these videos will help you out as well. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.